Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be doing the clear coat stage on this Lexus NX300. So if you didn't see the first video, I do recommend going back and seeing, watching that one first. If you want, whatever. I, mean, I don't really care. Just watch the clear coat stage if you want. This is when all the magic happens. This is a fun part, so I wouldn't blame if you're just wanting to watch part two. Uh, but either way, yeah, I just got a brand new tack rag, given a good tack rag down. I obviously skipped out um, a lot of the footage of the tack ragging, but yeah, as I said in the first video, don't discredit it. You know, it's um, very important. And a brand new car like this, um, probably, yeah, a bit more important to get a new tack rag. And as you may have noticed, I didn't color the entire bonnet. Um, I just did a bit of a blend on it. Most of the time, I actually don't blend bonnets, but this there was like that perfect line of the bonnet there that you can see, or the hood as you'd call it in America. You know, that's a perfect spot to lose the color. Um, and one thing I've found with solvent based base coat, which I'm using these days, so I'm using a standock solvent base coat. Um, I just find it a little bit grittier, you know what I mean? People who have used both will understand. So I've used uh, the Chromax, Chromax Pro base coat and I've used the standock solvent base coat and yeah you get the jobs a lot cleaner using the water it just seems to dry out really slick and sometimes it can look like you've got lumpy bits in your base coat but then when it dries it's just like oh just absolute bliss to clear over it feels like you're just about um t uh, sorry feels like you're flow coating just about every single job they come up so deep and glossy but you seem to lose a little bit of um the depth and the gloss with this with the solvent base so yes i am well aware that the chromax pro is definitely the better system but as far as speed goes it's yeah i mean i've got to go for solvent and where i'm working now i just love smashing the jobs out and when you get a job like this like yeah solvent ain't too bad you know but but then yeah it's like the the one spot in this bonnet where there was a few little bits of dust it's where the base coat was you know so it's just just part of it at the end of the day, but yeah, I'm really happy with the way this job came up. So hang around and watch some watch me glass and up a job. I'm using the Standox Standard Clear, which is a really great clear. Like I've been really enjoying using it lately. We use it on everything these days. Um, we were using Duke's own, and it was just a they changed it and yeah I mean even previously like a car like this would have always got the Standox Clear on it. Um, but yeah, previously, like on your average everyday, like a Mazda or you just, just your daily runabout, sort of say 10, 10 years and older, you know, we'd always just go and put the Duke sign on it, but they changed it and they ruined it. Um, so yeah, the spray gun I'm using, if you missed it before, is my Vigilante. I love this. It's just my everyday, like I know exactly what I'm getting out of this thing. I, I just about feel like I could whack a blindfold on and spray with this thing. It's just like an extension of my body. I, know, I feel like I don't even have to look. I know exactly what's going to come out. Um, yeah, I, I like the, um, the 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 fan pattern on it. Like I recently got a Iwata Supernova Lotus Edition and. What I noticed about that is that it's got like a, a really hard fan on it. So it's um, even when you wind it in, it's got like a triangular pattern to it. Whereas the Pro Lite's got a bit more of a curved pattern to it. So I've noticed with this, it's a bit more forgiving. Like say if you're to spray with it and you accidentally move that gun, say that way or that way a little bit, you move your wrist um, forward or backward, it's a bit more forgiving. Whereas with... Um, with that supernova, because it's got such a hard bound on it, if you move it, bang, you'll get a run right down the bottom because you'd be um, doubling it up. I still love that supernova. It is like the, probably the jewel in my crown of spray guns just because it's so beautiful. Like This here is the box. I would obviously care about it um, quite a lot if it made it into the office. Um, it's still at work, so that, that supernova lotus, it, ha it hasn't quite made it into onto the shelf yet um, as the background of my studio. But um, I break it out on a, uh, a job every now and then. But another thing I like about this um, Pro Light is I know exactly how much paint I'm going to need. And now we are using the Stanox Clear. You know, it's a bit more expensive than the Duke Zone. Probably double as expensive, really. But um, I, I want to get those uh, paint usage, the mils, right down to zero. I mean, I'm talking less than 50 mils, and 90% 90, 90 of the time, Alan can verify this in the comments if he likes, but he sees me walking out just about every single job, and I've got less than 50 mils of clear. Um, so I'm not 
excessively wasting and I'm not using too much on the job either. Um, yeah, so I, I did find that, that supernova used a little bit more clear. But yeah, I think um, Mr. Vega, yeah, there you go. He made it into one of my videos. Uh, always a positive commenter. Um, and he's like, man, I want to I want to see like a follow-up review on that Lotus. So I'll definitely do a follow-up review. I should use it more often. I really should use it more often. But it's just every time I go to clear a job, I'm like, yeah, it's just easy to use the Pro Light, you know. Um, yeah, TE 20, 1.3 mil, full fan, three and a half turns on the fluid, two bar, and it just hums along every day. So yeah, you may have noticed that I put the first coat of clear on the bonnet. I wanted to get like that to be the first thing I cleared, but then come back and have it sort of like the last thing I cleared, if that makes sense. I think that's how I did it anyway. Um, and that's just a bit of fade out thinning, just blending it up, because there was like a couple of chips on the windscreen pillar, and also it gives a blend for the color, because there's a new fender there. Um, a pillar, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I've been in this trade, yeah, I started in 2000, and I still love it, like, I still love getting in there and just smashing out the jobs, getting as many as I can done in the day, and just getting, like, when when you get a job that comes up like this, you know, you're just like, yeah, that's killer, <laughs> and I want to share that with the world, like, my love of the trade, you know, so, it's sad to see, like, some people, and they sort of lose the passion, um, uh, one of the older guys I work with, he's probably he's like 58 or something like that. So it's not that unsurprising that he, he, he admits to me, he's like, man, I've lost the passion in this trade, you know. Um, it's just a job for me now. Like, he doesn't hate coming to work or anything. He's, he's generally happy-go-lucky and, you know, nice guy to bear around. But he, he even admits to me, he's like, I, I don't have the passion for this trade as I used to, you know. But it's one thing losing the passion for it, but it's also one, another thing to just be an asshole to other people, which is not, you know. But some people are. Some people just like, I don't know. I, I heard this good saying years ago, you can't make yourself look good by making others look bad. And you, you say it too often, like, just people just bitching about other people saying, oh, look, he's done this, or he's not good at this. It's, that doesn't make you look good, you know. <laughs> like... I know there's probably some people that do that to me. I don't hear a great deal of it, but there's probably people out there that are like, oh, look at what the gunman's done on this. You know, he's such a hack. But that doesn't make you look good. You, you, Your own actions make yourself either look good or bad. And if anything, like, bitching about what other people do, that doesn't make you look good at, at all. It makes you look bad, really, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know, Gunny's just rambling on. I've, I've had this video in my editor for about a month or two, and I just wanted to get it edited, so if I start rambling off on a bit of a tangent, <coughs> forgive me, I just want to get this video done. Um, what else can I talk about? Yeah, the new Develbus, I'm really keen to get that um, into one of my, into my hands. Um, don't know about the design, I think they've tried to copy like a supernova versus it's just like a supernova and a Sada had a baby and spat out a Duelbus DV1. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things that it'll grow on me, you know, like I, I originally didn't like the Pro Light. Like first time I saw a Pro Light, I'm like, oh, that looks flimsy, you know, like I always have my um, original GTI Pros. Um, I love them from the start though, so... Um, I'm like, wow, the fan on these things are massive and they just smash the paint on. Um, but they grow on me. I love my Pro Lights now. You guys all know that. I, they can't. I was just rambling on about how much I love the bloody things a minute ago, you know. So, yeah, if you actually go back, look, I'm not going to go and show you the video because I don't like it. But my first uh, review on a Pro Light was not fully negative, but. I had a few things to say that I didn't actually like about it. So, you know, those people that think I am just a full-on developer fanboy, maybe go and watch that video. Um, yeah, like, I'll, I'll go back and watch my older videos, and it's kind of embarrassing. Like, I listen to them, and it's like, Howdy, YouTube, and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. Like, full monotone, and... I, I was just obviously a bit self-conscious back then. I think I've got a bit more comfortable in front of the camera. 
Um, but that's, I guess that's just part of, um, you know, developing and getting better at what you're doing. Yeah. But yeah, pretty cool car. I like this car. Like got that real space age look to it. I like the shapes of the bumper bar and I like this color. I think it was just called dark gray. One H nine was the color code. Come on, Gannon, you've only got like three more minutes and then you can go and have your weekend <laughs> nearly finished. Uh, I'll see it through. As you see there, not much more wastage at all. So decent sized job. I'll like I'll look at a job like this, and <clears throat> my rule of thumb for a standard panel is 130 mils. So that door, 130 mils. Fender, you probably need closer to 100, um, maybe 120, depending on the size. Uh, bonnet that size, I knew I was going to put a quite a nice amount of um, clear coat on it. So I went 350, 350 to four, because it is actually a decent sized bonnet. Bumper bar, depending on the size of the bumper bar or bumper cover, whatever you want to call it. I've been called out for calling it a bumper bar before, um, but that's just what we call them here in Australia. Um, but yeah, depending on the size of the, the bumper cover, two to 300 mils, um, and depending on your application method, sometimes on bars, bumper covers, I'll just go one coat, one heavy coat of um, this clears just enough or just go tack and whack it if you want to do a full two coat system yeah it's closer to 300 even on a smaller bumper but there you go that glass mate loving that stand ox clear there's a nib or two here and there it didn't take long to polish out um these days all i've been doing most of the time is getting my tungsten denibbing block um which i've had enough questions about that i might even just put a link in the description to that tungsten uh, denibbing block that I've got and just have it set to every single video but yeah just nib them out with the tungsten get the buff and melt it in a little bit and you don't even need to sand them anymore these days most of the time you know um, I've found there's like that window of um, perfect time to polish it like anything over five days it gets too hard and you will need to actually sand it but if it's before the four, you know, if it's like two to four days, you can just tungsten it out and it sort of melts it in because the clear is still a little bit fresh. But anyway, that's it for this video, Gunners. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.